Hey guys, we're back out here working on the garden again today. We're uh, trying to get a few things done. We're, uh, I don't know if you remember me turning in this uh, row of cabbage and stuff the other day, but uh, we went down through here and planted up some squash. Got some uh, green squash there in the back and some, uh, I believe these are zephyrs, the yellow squash with the green tips on them. We're gonna go ahead and finish out this row here with some spaghetti squash. We're working, working again with the Hori Hori tool. We uh, showed that in our last video and we've had a lot of questions about it, but uh, it's a good tool and we enjoy it. It's heavy enough to dig around in the garden, dig holes and got that nice serrated edge on it. You can cut away anything you want. It's a sharpened edge on the other side. And rope cutter there in the back. This one's made by Bare Bones, but uh, we're gonna put a link down in the description of the video. We've had a lot of people asking about it, so if you're interested in one, um, this Bare Bones, this one here was about $200, um, but they make a cheaper version of it. It's not cheaper made, it's just lower cost and a little bit smaller, slightly different handle, but the same tool. Um, we'll put a link to that down below, and it's about a quarter of the cost of this one. But uh, just as good, made by the same company, and you, you probably wouldn't wear it out. You can uh, stick that thing in the side of a steel barrel and not hurt it. So, uh, but we're back out here getting some stuff done, and I'll take you around and show you some of the other things we've done. So we'll be back with you in a second. Okay, as you can see, we've uh, finished up the squash here. We'll take a walk down through here. You get an awful lot of squash plants in a row. It. Walk down through here and take a look. These are the purple hulled peas that Dan from Home in the Stick sent us. They're just getting bushier and bushier. Those ought to turn out really well. We were uh, sorry to hear he lost his to some aphids, but last I spoke with him, he was uh, going to try to recover them. Let's see. Things you don't normally see here in the back of the garden. Um, these are some candy onions. We started those from seed. But, uh, there's a few of them there. Let's swing around. There's some, uh, I uh, forget what those are. Let's see. Butternut. Butternut squash. Down through there. Right through there is a row of okra. They're coming on. We'll thin those out when they get a little bit bigger. But there's some more of those candy onions. They tend to hide up in the middle of things, and we don't show them off a whole lot. The beans here are getting done. They got beans all over them, so we'll be picking them here soon. We'll be making a decision on this blank spot here before too long. We we'll have to get something in there and get it going. But we haven't really decided yet. These are some late tomatoes. Got those in. I think y'all saw when we put these pepper plants in. But uh, they're doing well. They're having a little trouble in the heat. But not, not too bad. They're still making funny little peppers on there. But more of the tomatoes. But let's look back over it. We'll, uh, take you around and show you some other things we've done today. It's been kind of a conglomerate day of uh, activity, so hang on and we'll show you something else. All right, guys, here's a good example of uh, things that don't work on a homestead. But uh, we had planted some squash in this box and the seedlings. We like to uh, stick in some plastic forks around them. It helps keep the birds out of them. But uh, the seedlings came up and they were kind of weak and weren't real happy with them so we've gone ahead and pulled them out the next step be we'll pull these forks and redress this box and I'll tell you what we're going to do with it next here in a second okay we put some compost on here and we're going to go ahead and work it in and I'm going to show you that hori hori again because I use it for just about everything and you see that it's heavy enough duty to work the soil in a box and it's sharp enough you can just shove it right to the hilt. It doesn't have any trouble working in dirt but a good heavy thick blade great for turning in stuff 
we'll get this box ready. And I've got some seeds I'll show you here in just a second. But uh, that's it. It'll do about anything you want it to do. Okay, guys, what we're going to be planting are some purple top collard seeds that were sent to us by one of our viewers. And uh, we'd also like to figure out what crawled out of that. That is one ugly thing. And there it blew away. But uh, these were sent to us by one of our viewers, Miss Charlotte, and we'd like to thank her for those. We'll, uh, we'll get these planted here in a second. And if anybody has any guess what that bug was, we'll uh, put that in the comments below. All right, Tina's getting ready to plant these collard seeds. So we'll just back up and let her do her thing. What we'll do is sprinkle them over the surface. We're not a we're not real used to used to growing collards here on the homestead, but. Uh, they were sent to us as a gift, and uh, we're sure going to try to do them justice. But we'll let uh, Tina work on that for a second, and I'll show you something else while she's doing it. Another example of things that didn't quite make it, that got themselves replaced. These are the two boxes we normally have planted in peanuts. I think you've seen us harvest those before. But uh, they are now the proud owners of wax beans and green beans that we'll harvest later this fall. But if something doesn't grow, we don't have the room to let dirt stand idle, so we'll just plant it back with something else. See the beets down there are doing good. But, uh, we'll get back here to Tina and see what she's doing. All right, what she's doing here is just what we call scrunching the surface of the dirt, which will doesn't really move the seeds around, but it does knock them just under the surface. We'll just tickle them into the dirt there, and that should get them down just low enough to get them under the surface where they can grow. We'll go while she plants this side, we'll take another look around. Let's see, some huge squash plants. I have to back off of them to even show them to you. But uh, over here we got some, we don't usually talk about these, but we got some uh, yellow-eyed peas. Those are good for making baked beans. And Tina would have to tell us what we planted next to them because I don't remember. You know what's next to the beans? Goblin's, Goblin's eggs gourds. That's what they are in between the works there. Goblin's eggs. But now you see the watermelons are still busily trying to get out of their box. They're gonna try to get over there and eat the bad boy. But uh, it won't take them long. Let's swing back over here and see what Tina's doing. I don't mean to spin you around. You can go ahead and finish tickling these in. That should fill that box up to a giant mound of collards and we enjoy them being from North Carolina we enjoy them with a spicy vinegar and a ham hock mixed in them when you cook them but uh all right you should go ahead and get these watered in here but we just don't don't have time in the year and we don't have the luxury of leaving garden space open very long if we get an open spot in the garden we figure out how many days are left in the gardening season and we take a look at what we need on the shelves and we'll find something to fill that space. We'll zoom in here close and see if we can get a picture of Miss Tina's hot pink boots. <laughs> but she's going on. We'll get these watered in and then we'll, uh, we'll move on and uh, show you something else we got going on. I don't know what that is yet, but I'm sure we can find something to take a look at. All right, I'm not sure if I can do these squash plants justice at just how big they are as we wander down through here. But they are 
probably chest high to me, probably about as tall as Tina. I'll have her sneak in here behind me while I walk on down here and uh, I'll show you these the rest of these squash plants and then uh, we'll get down here and take a look at some uh, cantaloupes we got going on here. These are uh, these are cantaloupe and these here are a little sweet specialty melon. I forget the name of them. But I'll uh, look that up and let you guys know in another video. But let's see if we can find Tina down here. All right, Tina is four foot ten, <laughs> and uh, let's see if we can lose her behind the squash. There, there we go. <laughs> to give you some idea how high they are sticking up out of there. But got some more beets and stuff going on over there in the other boxes. We'll bring you back here when we uh, got something else to show you. All right, we're over here at the little turtle pond that used to be a bridge across the creek. Tina's painted it up and put some planters on it, but she's been over here working for a little while, and uh, let's see what she's done. Those are some little pepper plants we had. They're not quite big enough to go in the garden, and they're a little late in the season to actually make, so... We'll give them a chance to see if they put on fall peppers, but we're just going to leave them here, and they can just be decorative. If they're not anything else that they won't produce, they can just be out here and look pretty. I'll have to get out here and uh, sweep off the bridge so it looks so dirty. But that's one of the things she's been working on today. All right, we're over here by the side of the chicken coop. we got some... Uh, planters that we keep down here along the edge. There's no gutter on the chicken coop, so planters get plenty of runoff water. Not sure if you would know what these are. I know there's one man out there watching that would know because he sent them to us and they're one of his favorite things. That'd be Mr. James over at Old School with a Modern Twist. And these here are his Kushaw mush melons. But uh, they're actually a squash, a Kushaw squash. But uh, he sent these to us, and we got a, another set of planters just like this over by the other chicken house. But they're doing good, and we're looking forward to trying them for the first time. Yes, folks, even Tina and I get behind. So I promised you we were going to pull this garlic out of here eventually. We'll probably get to that tomorrow, and it may be one of the next videos you see. But this is the last of the garlic we have in the ground. It's some hard neck garlic. But, uh, we get behind too, and uh, this garlic long ready to come out. We need to get it out before the heads start to split and sprout again. So we'll get to that. All right, guys, I'm going to give you one last look at this hoary hoary because you know we can't do this all day, but if you call in the next 10 minutes, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, I'm going to give you one last look at it, and we can quit talking about them. But they're a, it's a really good handy tool. But maybe I'd try to get up close, show you some of these features on it. It's, a, it's got a really heavy serrated edge on it. It's made out of a, looks like a Damascus steel, or Damascus finish anyway. It has a plain sharp side. And uh, I can tell you I sharpened this one with a diamond file. And I don't sharpen it very often. It uh, it stays sharp. But it has a hook cutter there at the base. The hook cutter is also sharpened. It's great for uh, cutting twine and stuff in a hurry. But it's got a metal hand guard on it. See the little emblem there. The handle is actually bamboo. But I know some of the other ones, including the model, I think we're going to Put the thing out, some of them have hardwood handles on it. But the pommel on it is metal too, and I don't hesitate to pound with it. And you can see I haven't damaged it very much. Well, we've had it a few years, and it's taken a beating. But it doesn't really show it. It just, they keep going and going and going. There's the logo for them if you're interested in that. This is a bare bones model. 
but like I said, this one here is a this one here. It's got this flat spot for laying it flat on the table. There's all your measurements for planting depth. But like I said this one here is a little more expensive model, but we found a good workable solution, and uh, we're going to put a link to it in the description of the video, and I'll probably pin a comment or something with a link to it too. But just wanted to give you a overall look at it. That's the size of my hand. Filthy as usual. But, uh, that's it right there. We hope you guys enjoyed them. If you want, get you one. And if uh, if you do get you one, tell us about it. Come on over and uh, see us on the Bumblebee Junction Facebook page or uh, leave us a comment in one of our videos and uh, show us yours and tell us what you're doing with it. But... All right, guys, let's find something else to get into. All right, you've probably seen our half barrel planters. We keep those in between the raised boxes. But uh, I'm going to show you this basil here. And I'd also like to show you these devils that have made their way onto the basil. So, nice thing about basil is, is it grows back fast even after you pick it, so we'll go ahead and get these treated and then uh, we'll pick off what they've picked on and it'll grow right back. No worries about that, but uh, we haven't had Japanese beetles on the basil before. That's a new one to us. So, uh, we'll uh, get that taken care of and we'll get some of this picked and we'll show you all how to make pesto here later in the year. Cucumbers are out here growing. We grow them in the half barrels too and up on the porch. But uh, as you can see, they are covered in blooms and starting to put on a few cucumbers. They're small still. We would like to get them while they're small so we can pickle them. But uh, they're doing good. Carrots are a shrub as usual. We'll be picking those here before too long. We keep checking them. But the cucumbers are just covered in blooms. And we're happy about that. Should be a good year for them. More carrots. More cucumbers. More carrots. More cucumbers. More carrots. <laughs> but uh, we'll go find something else to take a look at here. All right, we're over here by the tomato patch. Tina's been out here this morning working with the Cecil twine, getting the tomatoes tied up. You'll see it all down through there. The Take the branches and tie them back to the T-post. I've seen them smash a lot of cages, but I'll say again, I've never seen a tomato plant bend a T-post. We use the Cecil twine because it breaks down real easy. It's easy on the plant, soft, and absorbs water when it rains. But it can also go right into a compost pile or we'll chop it up and just turn it right into the dirt. It doesn't last long. But we went through here we keep a we keep forty tomato plants. Other than the Romas and some small ones we keep up in the gardens. We're snacking on. But these are the main crop. And uh, he's been out here all morning working on getting them tied up, so we don't uh we don't baby the tomatoes too much. They're just uh, here to put off bulk tomatoes. They're loaded up pretty good. Got a lot of small ones on. We'll get in here and now that they're tied up, we'll get some of these uh, lower blight branches off of them. But uh, they're looking real good. So far, so good. We'll see how they do the rest of the year. All right, big boy. This is going to be the end of the video. We're going to make you YouTube famous. What are you doing there? You have one big handsome boy. We've shown them before, but they're uh, our buff Brahmas. He's going to go over there and protect his ladies from the evil camera. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. We'll leave you with this shot of the rooster and his gals. He'll flap us on out, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.